Hi, it's Anna from Post Me Book. I'm gonna try doing a clip outside before the summer is completely gone. Um, and it's a very nice day. It's about 6.30 in the evening, about 24 degrees still, oddly enough. A little muggy, it's been muggy all day, um, but it hasn't rained yet. Nope, tell a lie, it rained a little bit in the morning. But I'm not sure it's gonna rain, it feels like it needs to rain. But anyway, so long as it's good, I'm not complaining. Um, and this one is just a quick clip because I've now finished The Janus Stone by Ella, Ella, Ella Griffiths. I had to say that several times, get it right, Ellie Griffiths. Um, this is the second, round, second book in the series of the Ruth Galloway, a Dr. Ruth Galloway mystery. And it follows from the cross, Crossing Places, I think the other one's called. These books, I must return them. I'm sure they want them back. I'm sure I'm just coming up with fines for not returning these books. So I better return this one and the other one. Anyway, so this book, the follow-up, I uh, probably didn't say so much about Ruth Galloway in the last one anyway, but she's an archaeologist, a forensic archaeologist, and in the Crossing Places, they, they had discovered bones, and the police had called her in to help figure out whether there were new bones or old bones. Um, can't quite remember whether there were new bones or old bones. But anyway, even if I did remember, I won't give it away for those who want to read it. This time round, Ruth Galloway is called in by another archaeologist to help out there. And then the police get involved. Now it's the same policeman as in the other book, and he's called Nelson. So Ruth, Ruth Galloway and Nelson, the policeman, have now formed some kind of relationship. Nelson is married with um, two daughters who are about, well, late teens, I think, about 16, 17, something about that. And Ruth is single and she lives with her cat called Flint on near a salt marsh, somewhere out there, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, it seems like when they kind of explain it. But she loves being there. Um, she has a mother and father who don't quite approve of her living where she lives. Um, they probably feel she's a bit of a slob, but she herself feels that she's a bit, she's not the tidiest of people, but that's the way she is. And she's not um, going to change just because others, others think she, ch she should change. And Nelson, the policeman, he admires her because he feels that she's she's got a strong kind of personality. Um, and he's not into, well, this is not quite true because his wife is described as a lady who keeps herself fit and who's pretty and who's, she's a hairdresser and keeps her nails done and all that kind of thing. But a nice, nice lady anyway. Um, yeah, so moving on from that, Ruth Galloway and Nelson the policeman have now formed a bond and they've got to know each other quite well. And this is a mutual bond and it's a mutual ad admiration because although they started off on the wrong foot in the first book, in the first book, towards the end, they actually got to know each other better and came to admire each other, um, admire each other's um, professions and how each one expresses their professionality within their profession. And, by the way, also how each one expresses themselves as a person. Nelson can be quite a person who seems to have a rough edge, but at the bottom of it all, he kind of has a nice heart and he can bring out the softness within himself. So coming back to the Janice Stone. So Ruth is called out to, to help out on a dig with another fellow archeologist called Max. And I think I'll have to just read up a little bit and find out what happened because I've already forgotten. So yes, they discovered these these bones that Max, the other archaeologist, had found. They were buried under a wall, and on this on this area, a long time ago. Well, perhaps not so long ago, but a while back anyway, a few years back, many years back, there used to be a children's home. And as this 
story um, and unravels is discovered that at this children home there were two kids that went missing so the question is that the policeman Nelson begins to wonder are these bones do they belong to um, these children or one of these children anyway so that's one of the main themes that runs in the book I should also add in this book which wasn't the case in the first book, Ruth Galloway is now pregnant. Um, and that's also part of a theme that's running, ongoing in this book, an important theme. And also, without giving away too much, she also, Max, the other archeologist, also takes a liking to her and she kind of thinks he's kind of all right. So it's to wait and see whether anything comes out of that in this book. Um, but to continue with the story of the bones that were discovered in the children's home. So to discover, in unraveling this whole mystery, it's part of, um, there's a father called Father Hennessy, now I remember Father Hennessy, who was a father at the time that these two children disappeared. So of course he's, he's a suspect by default. And then there's a sister called Sister Immaculate, who was also questioned at some point by Nelson or one of his um, fellow officers. And Sister Immaculate is a sister because, I mean, is a suspect, of course, because it's almost by default, because she was at the children's home and, yeah, everybody, according to Nelson, is guilty until proven otherwise. <laughs> so these two, two are definitely um, people of interest in this mystery. Um, yeah, it was a good book. It was, it was, uh, as I said in the last book, I did enjoy, I do enjoy reading the books. They are very easy to read. For me, they're not very gripping. Well, they're not page turners as such. Well, not in the sense that I really want to know who, who did it. Can't say that I could necessarily guess. You know, when you watch the series, they always kind of give you little hints. Um, when you're reading a book she's not quite giving me any hints on who who it could be but of course apart from the fact that it's one of the people who's mentioned in the books i guess it has to be <laughs> otherwise you'd never ever guess who it was uh but um, other things that i could mention in this story that might be of interest um yeah, as I said, there's a children's home that's now disappeared and they're now building up luxurious apartments on this area and then round about. The people who are doing it, it's a Spence, Spence family. And one of the main people is called Edward. He's the son of Roderick, the father who's building it. And the father, um, we, dis we discover, well, I think Nelson, is informed that the father has Alzheimer's because he questions, he wants to question the father about what he knows about the home. Because I think they find out somewhere along the line that the children's home belonged to the Spence family. So that's also another theme that's running. What, how is this involved in the whole thing? So all these people of interest, the father, Father Hennessy, Sister Immaculate, um, the Spence family are all suspects and, well, suspects are suspects. They, they, as far as, as Nelson is concerned, there's probably something going on somewhere that's tangled into the disappearance of these children because up to this day, they never found out what actually happened to these children. Um, Father Hennessy just says they ran off because the boy was, he was about 12, I think, and his sister was younger i think about six they ran off because they were never they were never quite happy they were never completely happy when when they lived in the orphanage um, and they were being taken care of by the sisters and although father hennessy says that the boy was very he was very clever and he had a fondness for the boy and i think that was shared by the boy um so i think that is all I can say about the book without giving away too much. I should just see what they say about the book itself. Uh, yes, which I also said the house was once a children's home. 
DCI Harry Nelson meets the priest who used to run it, who's Father Hennessy, who tells them two children did go missing 40 years before, a boy and a girl, and they were never found. Ah, so that's, that tells you um, a bit about the book. Um, reviews from different papers. The Guardian, for example, says a wonderful, rich mixture of ancient and contemporary. Daily Telegraph, a mem memorable, breathless race against time. One of the most cinematic finales in recent British crime novels. Sunday Times, Griffiths, Griffiths uh, weaves superstition and myth into her crime novels, skillfully treading a line between credu credulity and modern methods of detection. Yeah, why does that, why do they say myth? This is because certain things happen um, which are connected to, to the Romans, I guess it was a time, um, I guess it's, I think it's the Romans. Yeah, there's a stone that's discovered, which is the thing about the Janus stone. There's a stone, okay, perhaps that's some mythology, actually, it's nothing to do with the Romans. The stone, the Janus stone, is the stories because there was a, some kind of god to which this whole thing is related. The Janus stone, the title, I mean, is related to this god. Um, I can't quite remember why, but I guess one can discover by reading the book. Um, so that's where the mythology comes. And of course, there are other things that come in that are connected to mythology. Um, for example, Dr. Ruth Galloway, she's, there's someone who writes her name on a stone. There's someone who's cutting heads off, um, I think it was, was it sheep in this one or was it sheep in the other one? And leaving them outside her door anyway. Um, and things like that. And leaving a baby, a model of a baby in the grave in the trench where they'd been digging. So things like that. And the other archaeologist, Max, he's, yeah, it must be Roman because he's into Roman archaeology. So he can actually pinpoint that this is because of this god. So that's where that comes in. Let's see. Also, the independent, the perfect ratio of anticipation, shock and surprise. The Financial Times, a palpable sense of evil, perfect for dark winter evenings. I have to say, none of these reviews talk to me at all. We're not on the same wavelength at all. I, as I say, I think the book's all right, but gripping, no. So, perhaps it's not quite slow drama. I think what it is, what I feel is, if it was a series, I think I'd be more, more gripped by the whole thing. I do want to know who it is. Um, I still think it's it's slow pace for me. That's probably why I can read it at night. There's nothing that's going to stop me from putting this book down if I have to sleep. <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. I recommend the books, but I wouldn't call them gripping or fast pace or racing or whatever it is. All these papers say that it is. Well, it's an old book, so perhaps 2009, this was what was fast pace, but each to their own. I'm not dissing the book in any way at all. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, but then having said that, having said what I, what I think of the book, I am now going to read the third book. So they can't be bad, can they? Which is called The House, I've got it over there, The House at Sea's End. I shall just get it. That's the one. The house at sea's end. And we'll see what happens in this one. Um, of course, there are more bones found. <laughs> and I have no doubt that Nelson, the policeman, is also going to be involved in this one. This is actually because he works in Norfolk and these bones are found on his patch. Of course, he's going to be involved. Um, but I'm not going to read it just yet because I have to read other books um, that are that they do back at the library. But that was it. That was that short one. And the weather held and it was pleasant. But until next time, thank you for listening. Bye bye.